You're watching Drink This Tonight, and tonight we're going to look at my 12 bottle bar. A lot of people think that you need to go out and spend a ton of money and acquire a lot of exotic bottles in order to stock a home bar, but that's simply not true. In fact, you can get by with just a few basic essentials and you can make pretty much any classic or original cocktail that you want. A lot of people are familiar with the book The 12 Bottle Bar, in which the author recommends 12 bottles that you should have at home. I thought today I would go and I would create my own list of 12 bottles using what I use most frequently at home to make all kinds of cocktails. So we'll walk through those today. So let's start with the whiskeys. The first bottle you'll need is some rye. This is Rittenhouse 100 proof rye. The 100 proof is good because it helps to stand out in stirred whiskey cocktails. Now rye is perfect for anything like a Manhattan or an Old Fashioned or an Old Pal. It's really, really good to have around. So the second of the two whiskeys is going to be bourbon whiskey. Now bourbon could be used pretty much anywhere that you're going to use rye, but it tends to have a little bit more of a mellow, well-rounded flavor. It's actually nice just drinking it on the rocks. And uh, don't judge me for drinking Costco bourbon. Costco bourbon's actually good, okay, so don't hate. So let's move on to rum. My third bottle is some white rum. Now white rum is great because it has a more neutral flavor palette. And I had aged rum too, which we'll get into. But this is good if you really just want to uh, let the drink speak for itself. So for example, white rum works really well in a daiquiri. Um, and this is Bacardi Special Gran, Gran Reserva white rum. It's actually very good. So the next bottle is gonna be an aged rum. This is a Zaya 12 year blended aged rum. Now you could also use a dark rum too if you'd prefer that. But basically the difference between an aged rum and a light rum is that it spent some time on oak in an oak barrel so it's gonna pick up some of the flavor and characteristics of the oak. You could use this pretty much anywhere you'd use a light rum, but a lot of recipes, specifically a lot of tiki recipes, will call for aged rums. So there's a lot of experimentation you can do with rum. So the next of our base spirits is gonna be gin. Now here I have Hendrix gin, which tends to be really juniper forward, if you like that. If you don't like it, if you prefer something a little bit more neutral, you could use a London dry gin, like a Beefeater, or a Tanqueray, or a Bombay Sapphire. Or even you could go for like a Plymouth gin or something like that. Now gin is really important. In fact, I use this probably more than anything else in my home bar. It goes a long way because there's a lot of cocktails that can be made with gin. Martinis, Negronis, uh, bees knees, just to name three. There's tons of them out there. Next is tequila. Tequila isn't mentioned in the original 12 bottle bar book, but I think that's a mistake because tequila is just so good and that agave flavor just can't be had any other way. Okay, okay, so it's not used in too many classic cocktails except for maybe the margarita, but there's a ton of modern classics that you can enjoy, such as the Mexican three-way. Anyway, tequila comes in three different varieties. There's Blanco, or silver, which is unaged. There's Reposado, which is aged. And then Añejo, which is aged a little bit longer. This is a Reposado tequila, but really just find something you like. It doesn't really matter. No one is better than any of the others. Triple sec, also sometimes known as orange curacao. This is an orange liqueur that has a little bit of sweetness to it. On the high end, you have something like Grand Marnier or Cointreau, but you could go with something cheaper as well. Just know that those tend to be on the sweeter side, so adjust accordingly. Triple sec is used in a ton of different cocktails like the kamikaze, margarita, and sidecar, and a Mai Tai to counteract the, uh, the harshness of the lime and the rum. You can use it to round out and sweeten pretty much just about anything. Next is vermouth. Vermouth comes in two varieties. There's sweet and dry. For sweet, I like Punt de Mes. That's what I happen to have. Well, I used to have it, now I'm all out. I have a little bit left in the fridge. But yeah, that's the thing about vermouth. You need to keep it in the fridge because it'll go bad. Anyway, the sweetness of sweet vermouth is really useful because it can round out and sweeten up a drink that would otherwise be too harsh. For example, in a Manhattan, can you imagine just drinking a Manhattan without vermouth? No, it would be awful, it would be cold whiskey. So vermouth has a really important role and you should always have it in your bar. We looked at sweet vermouth, now let's look at dry vermouth. Dry vermouth has its place in the bar. It's obviously less sweet than sweet vermouth and I think the botanicals are a little bit more forward in a dry vermouth. Um, dry vermouth is used in a lot of different places, the quintessential example being the martini, but it's used pretty much everywhere, so it's good to have a bottle of it on hand. Here's where we depart a little bit more from the 12 bottle bar book. I include Campari in my 12 bottle bar because I love it, it's just so good. Okay, it's really bitter and maybe a bit of an acquired taste, 
but if you can get used to it, you'll really fall in love with this stuff. It's used in a Negroni and like a million things that derive from a Negroni. So if you want to make anything in that category, you'll need Campari. Next is maraschino liqueur. Okay, this also isn't in the 12 bottle bar book, but I love it because it's a really, really nice ingredient. It's very sweet, and it's definitely not the stuff from your cherry jar. See, it's clear. But it's got a very distinctive flavor, and it's used in a uh, Martinez, for example, which is an awesome drink. Maraschino is awesome. Last but not least, I wanted to throw in a wild card. In the book, they use Jennifer as a wild card, which is kind of a cool spirit but I wanted to make this my own. So I'm including absinthe as the 12th bottle in my bar. Absinthe has a bit of an anise profile to it and it was illegal here in the States for a long time. You can get it now, which is cool because it's a super awesome ingredient. It's maybe not the most versatile of things, but I like to add you know, a little sprinkle of it to a drink here and there to give it just a little bit more depth. So uh, that's what I picked. You don't have to put it in your bar, but that's the beauty of it. It's your 12 bottle bar. Thanks for watching everybody. Today I showed you my 12 bottle bar. I'm really eager to hear what you guys like to have in your home bars. Let me know down in the comments. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you really liked it, make sure to subscribe for more awesome videos just like this. I'll see you next time. And remember to drink responsibly.